Welcome back. Um, today I'm going to introduce you to my latest creation. Now, uh, you guys know I'm like, I'm, I'm building my CNC here and here's my CNC. So first thing that happens is I measure exactly how big, how much space that's going to need up. And I was going to build a regular table for it, but I'm told it's very loud. I'm told you have to run the vacuum, you know, to pick up everything. And so today we're going to take a look inside this mysterious box right here. First things first, it's, I'm going to show you exactly what it's for, what it looks like. And then uh, I have a slideshow of the process of me making it. So um, I'll go through the slideshow and then I'm going to kind of talk about some of the things that I learned along the way and some of the, uh, the recipe for success. Uh, it doesn't have a name yet, but if you want, you can leave a name suggestion in the comments. Uh, I just spray painted it, uh, just rattle canned it uh, to give it a little better look, um, but really it doesn't, it doesn't have a name or theme, I'm, so I'm open to suggestions. So it does, however, have its own power, and uh, the, uh, the CNC for it on the inside has its own dedicated 30 amp 220 line. Uh, let me show you a little bit more about this machine. So uh, starting here, this is the rest that the door sits on. And the door itself is actually pretty free flowing, although we have a couple of these little baby lever clamps, and those are to get that last little squeeze. Now, I built this door, and uh, it is a you can see right here, it's a two and a half inch thick door plus a little more. And everything here is multiple layers with acoustic properties uh, to trap and absorb sound. Um, I ran out of carpet, but I did a little bit on the inside. Carpet's good for uh, some high frequencies. Uh, and then inside here is dampening material that you're going to see later. It's a, uh, it's like a rock wool product that's made specifically for soundproofing. Everything has a closed cell. This is closed cell rubber insulation, which means there is no path for the, the little uh, sound waves to pierce through it. And you'll tell when this thing clamps down, it's a game changer. So most cabinets don't have their own, you know, their own uh, built-in vacuum system. So uh, that's going to actually plug right into the, uh, the top of the, uh, you know, right next to the spindle. And it's going to suck all the material up. Um, and here I'll do. That's what that sounds like. Uh, the inside is multiple layers uh, with OSB um, uh, insulation, uh, dampening foam. And then drywall, there's five eighths inch drywall. You can kind of see that layer there. And then on top of the drywall is carpet. All the joints were epoxied and foam filled. So there's just, just no path for sound to get anywhere through. Underneath here is uh, a complete sheet of two by four with, um, that's been, uh, that's also been primer sealed. So it's just a uh, rock solid. Uh, power and water will be flowing through with the back here when we put the new, uh, the new uh, CNC in here, uh, and there, there'll be video for that, so you get to see us actually install the CNC and how it turns out. Uh, down underneath it here will be the uh, controller, you know, fluid reservoir, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and then, uh, now I guess the last thing to do is to, uh, to give a demonstration. So, I'm going to get quiet here, and I'm just going to give you guys uh, a, a chance to, to hear what this sounds like, okay? And I don't have the CNC in here yet, uh, but the vacuum cleaner is super loud. So we'll just use this for ambient sound. So when you clamp, you get it pretty close. These little clamps pretty much turn, turn the sound off. This right here is two sheets of quarter inch polycarbonate with an air gap, with a one inch air gap, and it's sealed all the way around too. But just listen to what, what it sounds like when I pop the cork on this thing. So that's what nine, uh, 80 to 90% sound reduction sounds like. And that is gonna allow me to run this thing for hours and hours on end, maybe all night if I want, to do complex projects, 3D uh, reliefs, uh, anything I can think of. Um, well, thanks for checking out my project. If you have any, any questions about this, uh, definitely leave comments at the end. Uh, and from here on out, we're going to go through the slideshow. I'm going to show you how this thing was built. 
Uh, thanks for visiting. Be sure to like and subscribe. Hi. Well, uh, as I was just saying before here, my uh, my priority was to be able to run 24 hours a day if I needed to, be able to do long projects, uh, work at night and stuff without waking up kids. So soundproofing was super important to me. I did a bunch of research online. Um, so I decided to uh, try to employ every method that I saw. So I'm going to walk you through that process. So the first thing I did was pick my materials. Um, I used two by threes as my main frame. Um, I had these brackets laying around that I modified. Uh, those are the, uh, the galvanized ties, you see. And then in between all the panels, I had um, bought rock wool um, sound insulation. So it's a, it's not really thermal. It's really made for acoustics. And um, it was, I believe, uh, you got um, a pretty good amount, 24 or, or, or something square feet. Uh, and it was 50 bucks at Home Depot. You can just go pick it up. Rock wool, safe and sound, it says. So um, each one of those panels, I kind of was figuring out as I went. So uh, uh, that's this is the back, you know, the back of it. It's 48 inches wide, full sheet of a uh, half-inch OSB. Uh, and then I framed it. Then you can see in these pictures, I actually built the frame up, you know, um, on in my main uh, uh, work table here. And just kind of uh, started to, you know, add on the sides and pieces like that. This is just getting its general shape. Um, then, uh, by the time I got the sides on, it was too heavy for my table, uh, so I tipped it off and uh, did the rest of the work with it standing up by itself here. Um, first thing I did was I laid down uh, a, uh, you know, a floor for it and, and put the acoustic insulation in there. And then on top of that, it got a, t a whole sheet of two by four. So this is for the CNC to sit on. So I don't want something that can, can move or bend or whatever. So it's a full layer of two by four under, uh, on top of that bottom layer. Each of the side panels has uh, the acoustic insulation and then a pieces of uh, five eighths inch uh, drywall on top of that. Now, the reason why you're, I'm using multiple uh, materials here is because each one of these techniques kind of traps a different frequency of sound. And the rock wool will, will absorb a certain frequency of sound better than others. And the, the drywall is actually very good at sound dampening, which is why you see it in, uh, uh, in homes. And then uh, later on, you'll see the carpet, which is uh, good for high frequency dampening. Um, and that's just something inside. Uh, this is the carpet I picked out. It's not thick shag or anything ridiculous like that. It's like a, kind of an office uh, carpet, and I got it for 20 bucks as a partial piece at the local hardware store. What cost me a little more was these rolls of acoustic uh, foam. Um, I got these off Amazon, and they're 2 inches wide by 16 feet long, and it's quarter inch thick. Uh, this is closed cell uh, foam here with an adhesive back and the closed cell is important because it's not like a uh, 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 It's not an insulation that you'd want to use around a door or something like that It's specifically made so that air and sound and things like that can't penetrate through it uh, So I got some of this in quarter inch and some of this in eighth inch and I used a combination of those two to really create a, a very good seal around the door um, the door has its own little power grid. Um, that's where the uh, things like the lighting and the, the vacuum got uh, wired. And uh, I put switches on them so I can independently operate like the vacuum and the lighting. And then later on, uh, the water pump even too. Uh, you can see all the, all the insulation. Uh, I, I, every single corner is glued and caulked. And these ones are even foam filled to make sure that there's no voids anywhere. The next part was the installation of the carpet, which was actually one of the hardest parts because it mostly went in there as one piece. So it's kind of wrapped around and wrestling a piece of carpet into that shape was a huge challenge. The LED light you see on the top is actually recycled from a buddy of mine who got a couple of these or throw it away and we rewired it and sure enough it works and uh, it's going to get a good long life in my cabinet. The next thing I added was the little sucker. He's my one gallon uh, shop vac. And honestly, this is the loudest piece of the entire operation here. Shop vacs are crazy loud. This one's going to be uh, attached you know, directly to the uh, spindle to suck up all that, all that sawdust. Um, I love it. It's incredibly loud. 
but once you shut the door on it, you can barely hear it. So uh, this is one of the biggest reasons for soundproofing. Um, then the hardest part after that, you know, was uh, going to be making the door. So the door is going to be big, it's going to be heavy, and it's got to have, uh, it's got to serve a good purpose. So uh, I went and got two sheets of quarter inch polycarbonate. Uh, they're one by two foot. And I kind of had the uh, submarine porthole plan in my head. So I measured where that would sit based on my eye level. So I would be the one peeking through and be able to see everything that's being done. So that's why I mounted it where I did. It is uh, sandwiched between um, other pieces of wood inside the door. Uh, in each, uh, each one of those layers is silicone sealed. In the lower right, you can see I, uh, I uh, attached the window and the layers and then put tons of weight on it and let it dry overnight each time. Uh, to get it as sealed as possible. So that's a that's a one inch gap inside two layers of quarter inch polycarbonate. I was instructed that this particular style of soundproofing is more effective than having a half inch or more of solid carbonate. <clears throat> the next thing um, I did was I just completed the door. It got insulation filled. Originally this was going to be drywalled, but drywall wasn't strong enough to hold the hinges and to really hold up. So this is sandwiched in half inch OSB. And then uh, every all the seams were glued and sealed up and really tight. So the door is one heavy beast, but it was uh, it's rock solid. The next part was a lot of measuring and making sure that I was mounting the hinges in exactly the right spot and that they were really lined up. Anybody that's done hinges before knows that it's a total pain in the butt. And I probably, most people would have put them on the cabinet and then hung the door on the hinges. I went with the reverse because the door is so heavy that I had to come up with an alternative method. Now, don't laugh. I took my uh, my six foot ladder and I, uh, I clamped a board across it, a two by four, that was exactly the right height for the door. And I tipped the door up and strapped it to my ladder. Uh, what that allowed me to do was to precisely orient the door so it was exactly up and down and exactly at the right height and I was able to attach it and the, when I first swung the door shut it swung so easy you could push it with you know pinky the nail on your pinky finger and it would silently open or close and it wouldn't uh, it was it was really unexpected uh, you can see in the shot the foam layer so the the biggest layer is the quarter and to eat up the uh, remaining gaps, I used the eighth inch. So the total foam gap is almost an inch thick, and it compresses down about a third of the way. Um, originally on the right, you'll see that I installed a door rest for the door to sit on. And I also, my plan was to use something like a heavy-duty gate clamp. You'll see here on the, on the top and the bottom. So that was my original plan to hold this thing shut. I completely scrapped it and it, 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 it worked, but it didn't work. So it worked to hold the door shut, but it didn't work to, to really push down the foam to get a really tight seal. And these things, they weren't cheap or easy to use, um, so I had to tear them off, unfortunately. Not every prototype uh, is something that works long term. But I actually came up with a better solution, and that's the, the little clamps. They're called lever clamps. I believe, and uh, they provide that little extra oomph. So even though those are tiny, I think they're only a few inches long, uh, they can hold up to, I believe, 100 kilograms, and they're using a, just a tiny fraction of that. And they just do that extra quarter inch of squeeze to make sure that the door is totally, uh, totally closed. And I have one at the top and one at the bottom. Uh, at the request of my friends, I, uh, I painted the front because it had lots of marks and, and things on it. So we just, uh, I just spray painted it black. Uh, originally, I'm going to put a name on this with uh, maybe like a cool logo or something uh, as we move forward. That's it. Uh, this cabinet, I mean, it, you can look at listen to the audio. It, it cuts the sound down to nothing. Um, since the making of this video, I've actually, uh, I've actually installed the CNC in it. And there'll be some videos showing that, so like and subscribe, and I'll show you exactly how loud it is. And when I said it was 80 to 90 percent noise reduction, I'm not lying. Uh, I've already run this thing at night with uh, kids sleeping and had uh, nothing but good experiences. Hey, thanks for visiting. Be sure to like and subscribe. Have a great day.